Elements of a Good Lesson Plan Planning to Teach Critical Thinking In this round of discussing good lesson planning, we are going to focus on how we can teach critical thinking. As before, after the reading, there will be a quiz to check your understanding and ability to apply these concepts to examples. When we set learning objectives, we generally have in mind specific content and information that students will be working with. Since critical thinking involves thinking processes that could be applied to any subject area, critical thinking processes might at first seem too abstract to describe as observable behavior. Instead of being a restriction, however, the fact that critical thinking is not specific to any particular topic can free us to include critical thinking exercises in almost every area that we teach. So first you choose the subject area that you will be examining with your students as you also teach critical thinking skills. In our case, we will combine it with culture. We want our students to be critical thinkers as they learn about other cultures. Let's review some of the descriptions of critical thinking that we saw in Unit 2 and consider the kinds of activities that can support them. Number 1. Critical thinking examines assumptions. How can we get our students to examine assumptions? One way is to explicitly teach them about assumptions that exist in their culture and in cultures that are different from theirs. A good opportunity for this is by explaining and exploring contrasts between high and low context cultures, or between monochronic and polychronic cultures, or between individualist and collectivist cultures. Number two, critical thinking distinguishes fact from opinion. Activities that get learners to distinguish fact from opinion and observations from interpretations are excellent exercises in the development of critical thinking. Number three, critical thinking is a process. It develops over time and cannot happen as the result of just one lesson. As teachers, we should strive to include critical thinking objectives frequently in our lessons and build off of previous learning moments. Sequencing is particularly important in teaching critical thinking. Because critical thinking is thinking that is more careful than normal, teachers really have to break activities down into small, achievable parts and slowly build up to more advanced thinking. Timing is another extremely important element to teaching critical thinking. Critical thinking is careful and deep thinking. Thinking carefully and deeply takes time. You cannot cover a topic quickly and superficially and expect students to have deep insights. Make sure you give your students enough time to digest the lesson. Generally speaking, you will have to have fewer activities in your critical thinking lesson plans in order to give sufficient time to every step. As we saw in the text, what is critical thinking? Some of the most effective techniques for teaching critical thinking are discussion, the use of small groups, and problem-based tasks. Discussion and small group activities allow each person in the group to make a unique contribution. As you prepare the instructions and the forms of assessment that you will use in your lesson, look for ways of allowing different group members to contribute in their own unique way, while still holding everyone accountable to the same assessment standards. Problem-based tasks challenge students to think in creative ways. A key to the success of a problem-based task is to make sure that the problems are interesting and relevant to the students. Offering students a choice of topics is one way to make sure that everyone is working on a problem that is interesting and relevant to them. 
Given the complexity of critical thinking tasks, you are likely to need a rubric for grading these tasks. Giving students a copy of the rubric ahead of time will help them learn how you define critical thinking and what you expect of your students. Critical thinking often requires creativity and responses that are unique to each learner. Therefore, the way you describe successful completion of a task needs to be written in a way that can apply to a variety of responses. To give you some ideas, here are some items that you might consider including on your next rubric for assessing critical thinking. I explore a wide range of information so as to consider multiple perspectives. When I read articles, I check their sources so that I can know how reliable they are. I can distinguish my interpretations from my observations. I listen to my partner's ideas and show respect, even if we have different thoughts. I can connect and relate ideas clearly and in a concise manner. Critical thinking is a process, and tasks and expectations should fit the students you are working with. Your lesson objectives and expectations need to meet your students at their current level of development. To help our students improve their critical thinking skills, we need to show them how critical thinking connects to their lives and the things that they care about. We need to show them that critical thinking is not just an abstract concept, but plays an important role in our everyday lives. One way to do that is to engage multiple senses. That is, try not to limit critical thinking lessons to reading text only. Try to include images, sounds, and maybe even smells and tastes. Remember the soap and tea from the last reading? Get them up and moving. For example, have them do role plays and then discuss their reactions. Lessons that engage students' senses can use the simplest of materials while going a long way in motivating students and helping them make connections between what we are teaching them and their lived experiences.